Jayganga. My name is Ganga Nandan and we're joining you again from Parmati Ketan Visitors for another beautiful session on yoga. You know, Kudu Swamiji said so beautifully often to people who come here that Kudu Swamiji is my guru. Kudu Swamiji Ganam Saraswati Guru. He's the president of Parmati Ketan and he said so beautifully. He says, we're human beings, but we've become human doings. We're so used to doing. So this morning, we're going to take that theme of how do we unwind ourselves. This body that has been given, this mind that has been given, how do we utilize these things, learn how to turn it on, and then learn how to switch it off. So that the control is in our hands. Because if you had a phone and all you do with the phone is keep it turned on and on and on, the battery over a, a period of time actually depletes. It's the same for us also. This body instrument is a tool. And if you keep utilizing it, utilizing it without any rest, without proper diet, without proper care, It'll get depleted. It'll get exhausted. And so, how do we utilize these techniques to really bring this body instrument into a state where we are more effective in utilizing it to reach higher states of consciousness? So today we're going to focus on posture and Basically, loosening different parts of the body, especially our joints. Usually what causes disease or dis-ease is that we've got blocked energy channels. And that is where the techniques of yoga and pranayam come in to unblock those areas. And so the loosening practices that we do have multiple benefits, but primarily how do we take areas where the energy might be blocked and open them up so that we have a greater sense of heat in the body and are able to enter into an asana practice where our body is ready to stay in the asana. Because in Yoga Sutras, we say, Stiram Sukham Asana. Just to be in that asana for a long period of time and that asana itself becomes the media into which you have greater awareness, greater meditativeness. You know, we speak about Ganga. We speak about Ganga as this Niramta flow, Aviral and Nirmal. It's that flow of energy, a flow of fun in ourselves that allows us to be effective tools, which is primarily out of the five elements made up mostly of water, and utilize these techniques to allow that water to flow freely, allow that energy through the medium of water to flow freely through the body, so that the body becomes like Madanda, ever-changing and yet ever the same. So bring that awareness into our practice today. We are going to start with the neck. Yes? So just allow the head to drop to the left side. Breathe in, bring the head back to center. Exhale out, drop it to the right side. Breathe in and exhale. Breathe in. And this time inhale. And as you exhale, utilize the left hand to gently push down on the right ear. Gently push down on the right ear. I've extended my right fingertips down onto the ground. And just gently push down on the right side of the head, the right ear, and feel a nice stretch in the neck region, in the shoulders. Breathe into the space. 
breathe into this space. Hold. Three, four, five. It's a great stretch for the side of the of the neck. <clears throat> Let the head come down to the right side this time. Take the right hand. Place it on the left side of the head, the left ear, extend out the left hand. And again, just breathe in to the shoulders, in and out. Breathe, relax. Breathe, and bring the head back. Yes. There are wisdom practices, and then we are going to bring, add another layer to it layer of awareness of mindfulness yes so that variation we did in the neck exercises adds another level of awareness on these muscles yeah and how much tension we hold in this region of our body really allowing us to release to let go and let energy let prana flow and that's the crux of ganga yoga how do we let go and let it flow, let grace flow, let prana flow, let light flow. So with this, we're going to also move on to the next neck exercise, which is just twisting the head to the right side. And then breathe, bring it back to center. And then exhale out to the left side. Inhale, center, exhale, in, out. Yeah, this time as you exhale, use the first two fingers of the right hand. Gently bring that chin in line with the left shoulder as much as possible. Again, just kind of deepen that stretch, bring more mindfulness into this, into this loosening practice, into the friction of the I am. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, in the back of center. And this time, bring the left hand, just hold the chin as much as you can over the shoulder. Hold and breathe. Two, three, four, five, A moment, notice. Notice the sensations in the body. Now allow the head to come down, chin touches the chest. Breathing in, bring the head up and back. And try to have the back of the head rest on the back of the shoulder. Breathing out. Chin to chest, breathing in, bring the head up and down. Breathing out. So drive from your hand back to center. Let it come. Bring it to your eyes. Just a few exercises. So the neck. Now with the eyes, we notice how powerful the eyes are, yes? So we just can bring our awareness to a few exercises of the eyes because we spend so much time on the screen, on our phones, or on our computers, or on our television sets. And so much of that radiation hits the eye. And so just to take a few exercises for 
the muscles of the eyes and the strength in the eyes. So we're going to bring both of our eyes to the left ear, the ear. Eyes to look over on the left ear. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's back to center. You can close your eyes. Again, just for a moment, notice. Notice what has happened in the body. Notice the effect of just bringing the eyes to the left ear. Now bring both eyes to the right ear. Look and gaze over at the right ear. Breathe. You're never holding the breath. You're always breathing. Breathe. One. Five, six. Again, just notice what has happened with the eye and the sensation in the body. Now bring both eyes to the tip of the nose. Look at the tip of the nose. And again, continue to breathe. Hold. Two. The holding the face. Continue to do three, four, five. Now so bring your eyes to look up at the space in between your eyebrows at the third eye center. Yes, so we're going to bring our gaze up to the third eye. Four, three. Try to keep the eyes open for as long as possible without blinking. Close the eyes. Again, checking with the body, checking with the eyes. Notice what has happened around the eyes. Rub your palms. Oh, out of all of the senses, the eyes work the hardest throughout the day since the morning till the evening. The eyes are always on. So much information is coming in through the eyes. Taking this moment and offering gratitude to our eyes for being able to give us the gift of sight. So offering our gratitude to the eyes, we move on to our shoulders. So much of our weight, so much of our stress, so much of our tension gets tired in the shoulders. So we are just going to bring our shoulders up to the ear, breathing out and bring the shoulders down, inhale up and out. Reverse the rotation, bring it now up to down. Again, breathe the jelly breathing slowly, consciously. Bring the shoulders up to the ears and then exhaling bring it down and back. That allows us to release so many tension in the shoulders. We bring our hands up to shoulders, bring our fingertips onto our shoulders, bring our elbows together and then breathe and bring our elbows out and back, elbows together. This time bring the shoulder stretches, big expansion of the chest, breathing. And exhaling out as the elbows come together, breathing in and exhaling out. Reverse the rotation, breathing in and out. Ujjayi breathing, deep inhale and slow practice, exhale. And then bring your hands up forward now. We're going to bring our hands into a lift, into a fist. And bring our wrists around in a circular motion. And then reverse and bring the wrists around in the opposite direction. Bring my hands up and down. Up and down. You want to give it an extra push? 
can use your left hand to pull up against that, breathe into that wrist. Bring the hands up and breathe into the wrist. Yes, and then one other movement. Breathe into that wrist. Mm. So good. Feels so wonderful. Breathing in the other hand. Breathing into the wrist. Really feeling space. Releasing any tension. And look down. Into the wrist. And then. Hold and breathe. Push against the hands. Try to keep the hands straight. Breathe and feel the spaciousness. Feel a little bit of tension in that hand. Release and relax. So simple and yet so beautiful. So we worked up our shoulders, our hands, our elbows. Now we come down to our chest. Yeah? And we want to come down to the sides of the body also. We can bring our fingertips down onto the ground, extending our hands, keeping our elbows straight. And we're going to bring the right hand up to shoulder, bring the palms out and open like this. Bring the palm right up to the right ear. Bring the left hand down on the ground and exhale out. Yes, exhale out. Try to keep that right hand upper part of the right hand close to the ear. Try to keep that left hand extended. And if you are able to keep the buttocks and you are able to keep the hips on the ground, you can bend your elbows and deepen the stretch. Look up at the right hand. Hold and breathe. Two. Three. Or if you are not able to keep your hips and buttocks, if they come up like this, continue in that first way. Yes, no need to bend your elbows. Elbows is only to deepen the stretch. Yes, but stretch is deepened only if your hips and your buttocks stay on the ground. Hold, extend, breathing, lifting up, reaching up, 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 up to the sky. Hold. And slowly control two, three. Yeah, there's a tendency when we plop our hands down. But yoga is not just holding the posture, it's holding the posture, getting in and out of it with mindfulness. To yeah? so the left hand also, now we're going to extend to our shoulders, bring our palms up, bring it up to the ears, bring the right hand onto the ground. And exhale, bring that left hand over to the right side. And you can hold here, or if you would like, you can bend your elbows and breathe. Again, if you bend your elbows, hips and buttons should stay on the ground. Breathe in the stretch. Hold and look up at the left. Breathing and rising up, lifting up like you're touching the sky as much as you can, lifting all the way through the sides and exhale slowly. Two, three, shoulder, right? And this really nice, beautiful stretch. Now we're going to breathe in, bring both hands out. Like we're taking our fingertips and we're taking all of the energy of the universe and bringing it into the Anaha chakra, the heart center. Yes, we're bringing all of that into the heart center. Like where the kum, you know, we have this symbolism of the kum, which is like a pot, and we carry the divine nectar, the divine nectar of immortality into our heart. Just bringing and bringing all of that into the heart. And then as you feel the lid of a pot, you know, twist, twist and look back. Yeah, right hand on the left knee, left hand behind the body, twist and look back. Hold and breathe. 
And I'm going to just turn to the side so you can see me because there's a tendency that when we do our shifting, when we do our twisting, we put our weight on the back hand. We kind of slouch back like this. That's not the way to do this. It's very active. Your spine, super important, right? So we can bring our right hand to our left knee and we're going to twist. And the key is keeping the left hand close the upper part of the left hand close to the body, twisting, looking back, keeping the spine and the body erect, keeping the weight of the body down through the buttocks, uh, down through the thumb, looking back, holding and twisting. Each time you breathe in, rising up through the shoulders, each time you look back, twisting and looking back, breathing in, rising up, looking up, and then exhale out, left hand, right knee, right hand behind the body. Twist and look back over the right shoulder. Keep the weight of the body down through the buttock. Twist and look back. Each time you breathe in, rising up through the spine. Each time you exhale out, twist and back. Hold and breathe. Breathe and reaching up, rising up. And exhale out, giving yourself a beautiful, great, big hug. So, those were seated, yes? Now we're going to extend our seat. It's, not, it's difficult to sit cross-legged for a very long time. So how do we have a practice that allows us to extend our feet? Bring our feet out forward. I'm going to bring our toes in as much as possible. Feel the stretch in the back of our feet. Keeping our knees engaged. And so we're going to bring our fingertips behind the body. And we're going to bring our fingertips so that the shoulders come together. The shoulder blades come together. So we're engaging our toes. We're pulling our toes in. We're engaging the kneecaps. We're bringing our shoulders together and we're holding and we're breathing. We're lifting the sternum, lifting the chest, breathing up through the spine, really pushing into, you know, our shoulders. Breathe. Two, three, four. Bring your toes in a little bit more. Five, six, seven, Eight. Hold this posture, breathing in, bringing both hands up, breathing in, bringing the chest out. Hold two, again, toes in, 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 in. Tighten, tighten, activate the entire body. Four, five, six, almost there, not done yet. Bring our hands behind the body, interlock our hands. So that the inner part of the palms are on the inside of your elbows. And we're just going to breathe in, bring the toes in, keep the spine, needle them straight. Hold, in parallel to the ground, sternum and chest up. Push the chest out and forward. Breathe. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale. The act of Dandasana, yes, is we could do just a Dandasana and get into Dandasana, but we need to bring your awareness to the muscles of the body, to the muscles of the back, yeah? Very difficult to have that kind of awareness in our practice, but that's what makes asana asana. So we're going to breathe in, bring our hands up to either side of our Shoulders, and then as we breathe in, bring the hands back, and as we exhale out, bring the hands forward. Your toes. Now, for most of us, our spine, our lower back, is very tight. Our hamstrings are very tight. It's very difficult to bring the body completely to rest onto our feet. Yeah, super difficult. And so, I would recommend. Few or three little modifications here. 
if you're not able to bring your hand to your toes at all, you could try just keeping your hands out forward like this. You could try just to hold like this. You could even get a strap hold against like this and then breathe, 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 breathe as much as possible. And slowly the muscles will move. They will, they will mold into a greater sense of flexibility and ease in the posture. So if that's not possible to bring your hands around your toes, those are all viable options that you can utilize. But if you are able to bring your hands to your toes, the ideal situation is to keep your abdomen on top of your thighs and really breathe here. And it's just difficult to keep your abdomen on your thighs. You can gently bend your knees also. And slowly, as you straighten your knees, try to keep the contact between the abdomen and the thighs. So that you are able to deepen the stretch in the back of the hamstrings. Hold and breathe. Two, three, four, five, six. We can bring our toes around in a circle and open. So much of our time we spend, you know, with the upper body just straight and upright and Forward bending is so important in so many ways. Reverse rotation. First of all, it allows us to bring a sense of humility. It allows us to bring a greater sense of flexibility. And it releases tension and stored up energy in this region, in the hip, in the abdomen region. Allows us to really ease out tension in a very strong area of our body. A lot of our chakras are located here, and so we need an awareness to forward bending. So that is one. Then we're going to bring our right foot into the left knee. We're going to bring the right hand behind the body, breathing in, bringing the left hand over and out across the shoulder here, up. bringing the left elbow around. The right knee, look over and twist. Hold. Two. Three. Four. Five. Hold like this. And six. Many people might have difficulty bringing their elbow around, so you can bring your hands around the knee, keep it towards the chest, and look back over the right shoulder again, try not to slouch back, yeah? You want to keep the spine upright and just breathe in like this. If you are even more flexible and you want to bring your hands out and around like this, fantastic. Breathe, hold and breathe. And if you're even more flexible, you can bring your hands to the left foot, left knee around it, and then breathe. But the goal is not to just try to do this at the expense of collapsing the chest. You want to keep the chest nice and open. So there's a twist in the torso and then there's a opening of the chest and both are very important in Vakrasana, in this asana. So breathing in, exhale out, release. It's a simple asana. That's why I included as part of our routine practices. Breathing in, breathing in the Right hand over the left knee, looking back over the left shoulder, hold and breathe. Again, you can hold here, you maybe make a mudra, like a chin mudra. You can hold here, like left knee to the universe, left knee to the world. Giving dua, giving blessing. Keep your hands here, you can keep your hands here, but the chest and the face in the first level. Should be there. Bring the hands up and exhale out down. Bring both feet out. Bring the toes out. Breathing in, out, in, out. Yeah. Bring our feet into cross legged again. Today we'll end our session here. You can hold. You can do a simple sukhasan, which is cross legged. Just make sure that you're stable in Sukhasana. 
if it's difficult and your knees come up like this, you want to get an elevation for your buttock so that you rise up your hips and your knees become plain and your hips become above your knees. So if that's a modification you need to do in cross-legged, that's what you can do. I'm sitting in Ardha Sivasana. And with the Ardha Sivasana, I've taken my left heel and brought it into the space between the anus and the genitals. And that area is known as the space of the Muladhar Chakra. Yes? So just to activate the root chakra and bring that energy up. It's known as Ardha Sivasana. It's a preparatory phase before meditation. Yes? And so you can be here for a moment. And Mojo is going to do climbing. You can also do Sukhasan. So we're going to breathe in and exhale out. Yes? It's like a beautiful, beautiful practice to loosen and release any tension in the upper body, in the shoulders, in the hips. And kind of as you come back, create space here. Yeah? Bring the spine back. And breathing in and exhaling out, and if you would like to give a greater sense of mindfulness, ujjayi breathing and exhale. And of course, any good asana practice, any good practice of morning stretches includes the opposite. So, reverse the rotation and back to center. We're going to breathe in, bringing both hands to the side, breathing in, bringing both hands up into front of asana. Hold two, keep your eyes at eye level in front of you. Three, four, five, bring both hands to seated parvatasana, modifications of seated parvatasana. Breathe in, bring it up, and then exhale out to the side. Breathing and coming back to center, looking up at the hand and bringing both hands. Just one foot off of the ground, suspend here, hold and breathe. Two, three, four, five, six. Breathing and coming up, control. And then lastly, as we exhale today, and then we release our hands from the front of slowly, slowly bring the hand down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down. If you have you can prepare at heart center. We'll close out our practice. If you would like, you keep your hands on your knees as I recite three ohm. If you would like to repeat the sound of ohm, the sound of creation. With me, you're welcome to do that. It's a very beautiful and very powerful practice. Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh... 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 Ah. Uh...
Very good. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. And I hope that you enjoy the talk of the day. Much love from the base of my Ganga. May you not just do yoga, may you really do yoga, may you live yoga, and may you love yoga. Very good.